It was all a pipe dream Watching body boarding up on TV Deep at reef, watching tension repeats Eating bakery feeds at 18 Living the dream with no sunscreen Yeah, we were so keen Surfing Aussie pipe Buying Riptide Eating shit pies Maybe get high Few drinks at night Underage in the clubs Give him a dub Huge airs from Jeff Hub. The first to do it was Mike Stewart Won it every year Began the movement G'day and welcome to the Riptide Bodyboarding Podcast, the home of bodyboarding. Thank you for joining us on episode 32 of our Verbal Journaling. I'm your host, Luke O'Connor. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, you can probably see by the video intro, we're sitting with two bleach blonde Californian legends, man. Craig and Tanner, how are you? I'm speaking none other than Craig Wetter and Tanner McDaniel. Gents, what's doing? Well, we're here. We're doing good. Doing as good as we can be these days, yeah. We're we're yeah. quite hanging in there, but we're we're doing it together, so so we're all good. Yeah, obviously, I don't want to start the podcast off on a very negative note, man. But I think you know, in, in your comments there, you've obviously raised the point already. The passing of um, Evan McMillan must have hit the community extremely hard, and I just wanted to know how, like, how is everyone doing, and what's the vibe over there at the moment? It's pretty heavy. Yeah, uh, yesterday was a tough day for everyone. Um, I, we found out yesterday morning about what happened and it was just kind of a pretty, pretty weird day. Just the whole day we were just kind of like, we went over and we, you know, kind of just reminisced about Evan and met up with some other of the kind of local groms and just kind of like checked in on everyone just to see how everyone's doing. It's like, this so unexpected and so sad really. It's just like, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yesterday it was tough. Yeah, don't want to get too yeah. down, but um, yeah, it was it was it was a hectic day for the local scene around here, and just for, kind of for bodyboards every bodyboarders everywhere. Like I didn't really realize kind of how far reached he had become. Like just getting messages and seeing the response from people internationally was like pretty heartwarming to see that you know everyone knew who he was and knew kind of the character he was. So it was you know cool to see that kind of support yeah. for him well man to be perfect you raise a very valid point there when you think about it, his character did touch so many people because the first thing i saw in my feed when i woke up in the morning hence why i emailed you guys straight away just to check in and see what's going on was that exact thing evans passed away and everyone was in disbelief and you were seeing that just not only from an outcry from the west coast of america and california you were seeing it from europe you were seeing it from australia you were seeing it from hawaii you were seeing it from south america everywhere um, and, you know, I've only heard in some of the recent podcasts you guys have done on the Jay Real show or, you know, even back with the Boogie days, you guys have referenced Evan as a very good Cali Wedge rider. And so what's it going to feel like not having him in the lineup there anymore? I mean, I, I haven't surfed since we found out, so I don't know. It's going to feel like there's a – definitely going to feel like there's a gap in the community and in the lineup. Like, he was one of the standouts at Wedge last summer. He – we've – had quite a pretty serious swell bender the last two weeks, three weeks. And he was like, for sure, the stand of the swell, like every spot. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, that's not going to be, not going to be the same. That's for sure. But yeah, I think everyone was kind of feeling this, the same kind of feeling that we woke up to, but you know, it's just all, just unfortunate and I still can't really believe it so man in respect to Evan and um obviously all his peers and the community over there you guys have had a crazy run of swell and it's almost ironic that his um death is coming towards the end of such a an amazing run like can you guys give us a rundown of over the past couple of weeks and what you guys have been getting up to because another thing that's been flooding my feed is goddamn fucking pumping waves from the west coast of of america fellas it's been out of control amen to that it's been crazy yeah that's exactly how you how we can put it it's been it's been a long two or three weeks but in like one of the better ways so <laughs> yeah yeah where, where have you fellas been surfing what, what's been going on all over Dude, we've been yeah we've been up to seal beach the poopy water brown water <laughs> just sewage water freaking gross man wedges everywhere Oh, yeah, man, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like Quite the literally. it's like a spectacle to see, especially because it hasn't it hasn't really broke in the last like what three years. Yeah, not properly. So to see it like oh, wow. in all its glory like that was 
yeah. pretty crazy. This isn't a wedge that you featured in in a movement double spread maybe like three, four years ago. Was it Tanner? No, that's not the same. Okay, sweet, cool. Just want to double check because I had something in my mind and I was like, that's pretty dreamy, but I, I yeah. can't wait to see this, the other result. No, Seal, Seal's like, it's pretty crazy. It's a, like... There's like a pier and then there's a jetty over here and waves smash across the entire jetty and then and then come back across the whole beach and then hit the next like group of waves coming in. So then it all just crosses up. Like you see drone you, you see drone shots and they all are like just X's. Like <laughs> the LA River dr like quite literally drains like feet from like the northern part of the beach. So like <laughs> it all is just kind of and it always seems to be going off when it's right after a rainstorm. So you can just imagine all the water that's just flooding out into there. That's Sin City, eh? Everything just flowing out from the last year. Oh my goodness, yeah. I, I remember actually visiting America and the one thing I was no, uh, I noticed massively about your systems because you guys, like your, your waterways and irrigation, because you guys have such beautiful mountains and you get such heavy snow um, pack melt and everything that flows down to the coast all your waterways and your cement um uh i guess piping or like um i don't know how you would describe it almost like a half pipe the way all the water gushes out of the the um city they're massive man they're like 20 meters wide and like so high i could only imagine what's flowing down them after all that rain and what it collects yeah well this last storm it was like overflowing almost like oh, yeah. we don't we don't get that much rain around here but just the last like three weeks have just been like nonstop and it's just been yeah. yeah and it was even crazier up north yeah norcal got pretty bashed like yeah really like relief stats like <laughs> they need money to like repair some things and like streets falling like yeah was it a category five hurricane like was it super legit um what was it it was i don't know i keep hearing bomb cyclone yeah, it was, I think it was the equivalent of a Category 4 is one figure I was told. I don't know if that's accurate or what, but. It's still pretty strong, though. Either way, like Category or whatever, you know, different name, bombing cycling. I like how the media usually does hype that up. That's a, that's a good one. But it delivered crazy waves, and it must have made it all the way down to Mexico, it looked like. It was, it was wild, man. The fetch of it, like we even looked on the maps one day, I was just like, these guys are getting battered. And all the snow you guys received over your – Chrissy and into January, man. Like, I keep seeing that too. Have you guys had a venture up to the mountains or anything like that? This guy. I finally went snowboarding for the first time in my life, and that was sick. Yeah, yeah that was sick. Effie, where'd you go? Uh, we went up to Tahoe. My, oh, my yeah. dad was a snowboarder back in the day, um, so we had some connections up there. So we went and we got hooked up, and it was a sick time. It was so fun. I've heard that's one of the most, like, prestigious resorts in North America, like Tahoe's sick. That's where Heavenly and all that kind of stuff, the, the surrounding areas. Yeah, yeah, around there, I think. I don't know. I, I was so far out of my element up there. Like, I don't know really where I was, what's going on, but it was so yeah. fun, man. Did you ever want to um, maybe get the boog out of the car and just sling him down a couple of runs? Because when I was over in Canada, me and my partner stayed there for four months in the motorhome in winter, just traveling from um, the West Coast around British Columbia, a little bit of across the border in Alberta and then back over. But um, at Kicking Horse, I grabbed one of the uh, plastic mats. They all go tobogganing on and sliding. And I sent it down the front run, just legs crossed the entire like the entire way down, trying to spin out. And so yeah, I was froth and I got my, my missus to film me the whole way down. But instantly I was swarmed by like four guards because the week before someone had done a similar thing with either a bodyboard or a toboggan and actually launched through the lift line and into the cafeteria. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. And so yeah, like full jackass stuff. Like they went crazy. And so I did it a week later, not even knowing. And I was swarmed, man. I was kicked off the mountain for the day. They were so off me. I was like, man, it's just it's it's bodyboarding. Like I know we're not near the ocean, but it's just boogan. Give me give me a break. They were off it. Wow. That's mental. In, into the cafeteria. No, we did we didn't do that um this time, but last year, kind of around this time, we actually went up just like an hour or so kind of towards the mountain and found a couple little patches of snow and we were sliding around on the bugs and stuff like that. That was fun. It's a good time. I could see that becoming a sport. I know Shane Ackerman on one of these um, trips to the back country here in Oz, you wouldn't think we'd have any mountains because we're just a big desert floating island. But there's um, a couple of mountain ranges that link from Victoria up into New South Wales and 
during like the snowpack melt, you can go and camp up there really easily and they do a lot of hikes and whatever and it's it's great. You've just got like, you know, slushy snow skiing, but it stays for months at a time. And um, you can even almost snow uh, ski at Christmas time, believe it or not, in Australia, which is bizarre. You wouldn't think that was the case, but you almost can. And he took a bodyboard up. And the natural half pipes in there, there was actually, I think it was an online, I know I keep referencing movement and this is a Riptide bodyboarding podcast. So I, I just want to make that known that Riptide all the way, fellas. Woo! But um, I think there was like an online movement um, interview with him and he did take his boog up there and said, yeah, the possibilities. Like he said, it was hard, don't get me wrong, but you could definitely um, you could definitely go give it a go. And those tension videos, man, remember that like in three or four when they were launching down those front faces? So hectic, so sick. Oh, Shane dropping it on like Shane dropping on like two hundred footers, like just in real life, and absolutely <laughs> yeah. losing it or what? <laughs> How big do you reckon that one at Chopes was that he got? Like, could you put a number on it? Am I speaking as someone who lives in California or someone who lives in Hawaii? <laughs> oh, wave scale. That's a big one, eh? That's a big one. Okay, explain for listeners, Tanner, that's a bang on fucking point. I'd love to elaborate on that. What's the difference between wave scale from, say, America, Australia, Europe, whatever, and then comparing it to Hawaii? Why is there a difference in wave scale? Okay, so I can really get deep with this. Um, it's hard to explain. So they say that in Hawaii, you measure a wave based on the, instead of the face value, you measure the back. But I don't really think that's how it works. I think it's a scale more of heaviness. So like a three footer is probably like a six foot wave from the face value. Four footer, you double that. But once you get into like six foot, eight foot, it's really about how heavy the wave is, I think. Because I've heard people yeah. say like a mushy wave at pipe is three foot, when in reality it was probably like a 10 foot face. So it kind of just varies based on pretty much how gnarly you are. <laughs> I know. And, and that can be really blurred sometimes too. It kind of, it, it almost pisses people off to a certain degree because you can undersell it and you can oversell it. And ones that oversell it, you often get annoyed at more because you're like, man, I was there this morning. Like there was three to four foot waves. There might've been the old bigger one, but it wasn't six to eight foot. Do you know what I mean? But then the dudes that undersell it and the chicks that undersell it, you're kind of like, I'm into it, but then it's also frustrating because I don't get a clear guide on the actual surf. And then I'm scratching my head wondering, like, did I blow the waves this morning or was it actually that size? Like, Yeah, it's, yeah. it's such a funny thing that that exists in, like, surf culture. Like, For sure. like yeah. just use the same scale. Like. Yeah. Craig, do you guys have it down at the wedge? Like, do you guys often have people on the beach? Because you're littered with fucking photographers and videographers and everyone watching the scene. Is there a varying combo out there? I don't know. People just say it how it looks. I feel like if they think it, their 10 foot is 10 foot, then it's 10, 20 feet. So it's, I don't know. They, I feel like it's just quite personal over here. Um, there is, I, I feel like there's a group of people that, that know the size and just kind of know how it act, like really works. So I think it's more like legit for those who, who know, but there, you talk about wedge and there's like, anyone from eight years old to like 60 <laughs> and like they just don't really know if it's big it's big yeah well you hear people on the beach like sometimes when the news shows up to film wedge they're sitting there calling it 25 foot and we're like it's not like even if you even if you measure it's not 25 foot it's maybe 10 foot <laughs> that's what i would say yeah for sure i think the same happens at nazareth too you know a lot of the fellas over there and Tony Savraya and Miguel Coelho and Pino and all the all the um, the fellas who regularly surf there, like always reference that. Like tourists will always come up to him and just be like, "So you know when's um when's the big wave coming?" And he and and Antonio by then now I think he said to me the other day, he's like, "I'm telling them a time." I'm like, "Yeah, 2 p.m. on Saturday, come." and the big wave will come. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like even I've said this to people before, and I. I'm, I might be sounding real harsh when I say this, but it, and I just take it for granted, but when you say I'm going surfing to get a wave, like I'm keen to go get a wave, people think you're going for one fucking wave. <laughs> <laughs> no. And it's like an occasion, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, no, 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 I'm not missing, I'm just going for a surf and there's plenty of waves out there. But like the, the lingo that we take for granted every day, especially across the bodyboarding culture especially, is, um, is crazy. Like who, who would know what Craig's is? Yeah, no way. You like, yeah. 
Not a. <laughs> you couldn't explain that to someone. If and if you tried, they'd be like, like what the? What like, are you, why? What are you going on about? <laughs> why do you have a special yeah. term for that? <laughs> exactly. And you know, coming from you guys, you guys hold the Craig's. Um, the Craig's history strong. Like you guys, you guys hold it down. You pack it down. Some of those revs that you guys bang out on a consistent basis, tight and stylish as hell. Like, is that something that is um, focused on heavily in Cali? Like style is a big thing. Well, you could probably speak to more on this. Yeah. Because you spent, a, well, you grew up here. I've, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, I know you're from Hawaii. I know, I know. I know you spent a lot of time there, Tanahan. I didn't mean at the start to say Cali boys is in you originated from. You are from the island of Kauai in Hawaii. But um, I was referencing more because of the breaking even um, stuff recently, you know, and the, the whole scene, what you guys are pumping up over there. But yeah, Craig, sorry, please, please go ahead. Um, yeah, like a lot, a lot of like this, at least from what I see, the guys in like South Orange County, which is where we're from, it, it's pretty like high on the list of having a good style and you hear a lot of them talk about the Australian style and like there's a lot of the younger people who like really look up to that and now from we what we hear it's cool to see that they're looking up to what we're doing so it's like it all it's, it just comes full circle and it's really it's it's pretty cool that there's a lot of kids trying to you know pursue a nice smooth looking style yeah yeah i think it's super important for the sport because it only makes it easier on the eye and it makes it look a lot more professional and i guess it separates your um your activities on the beach compared to someone who is you know not ill-informed on bodyboarding but someone just has no idea and it's just going down there for fun and just mucking around and people still say to me this day and age that you know boogie boarding like boogie boarding or bodyboarding or like whatever they kind of call it they don't have a defined name for it and i know you know, a lot of um, talk in the sport at the moment um, is about the industry being slight decline and, you know, we're always trying to talk about pump it back up. And it's it's only been referenced in the last six months, I feel, that that's starting to really surge and happen. And it's happened massively over on the West Coast there with you fellas with Breaking Even and, um, you know, the movie that premiered was on the 17th of December, was it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Seventh December. Um, supported by Riptide and with the community coming up strong and like that upwell in the last six months in this premiere. Like, what have you guys seen in the hometown and and on the west coast? Like, what's been going on? What's the feel in the Walder? Well, there's. I mean, you go down to the local spots and you see a lot of people riding bodyboards. Like, it's cool to see. Like, it does seem like there's been a at least a slight resurgence, which is you know heartening for sure yeah 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 definitely and do you guys ever have any moments out in the surf now where you wish there wasn't a slight resurgence and there's too many people in the lineup taking your waves i don't know i, I think that's pretty rare <laughs> i think that's pretty yeah. Rare. I, yeah i feel like it's just like right now it's just good to see it all happening um yeah. and when there's good swells at least like the last few weeks we've had you know everyone's getting waves like it's not really it's not really an issue there might be a time in the future but there, there's times where it gets crowded with you know the surfers and bodyboarders and then that kind of gets frustrating but just bodyboarders in general like everyone's pretty tame and and is pretty keen on sharing yeah but i'm i'm hardly ever getting frustrated with other bodyboarders in the water it's mostly just the stand-ups really yeah yeah i was just about to ask with the relationship there craig like and and Tanya, you guys both surf the wedge a lot and, you know, waves around the world. How have you seen the relationship lately between surfers and bodyboarders? Is there a, is there a, is there a more of an understanding or do you feel like there's a bit more of a separation between the two? I think it varies by location, honestly, like spot to spot, even around here. Like at wedge, whatever you ride, that's cool. Like, you know, you don't really feel any issues with the other stand-ups because honestly, like, there aren't that many stand-ups that consistently surf it. There are a handful for sure. And they know too, like they know where to sit. They know how to, they, like they know what we want. Like there's different waves out there for them. So it's like, if we could just get that, that group, that would be freaking cool. <laughs> hey, Craig, that is such an amazing point you raised, man. It just resonated straight away with me. Out Cape, it's the exact same thing. When you hear surfers talk about the waves they want and then the waves bodyboarders want, in the lineup, if you've got the local crew sitting there, they'll say, oh, hey, this is a bodyboarding one because they know when they're looking at it, there's no one paddling into that. It's way too steep on the face. There's no chipping. There's no whatever. 
with a bodyboarder, you kind of know that those ones you've got to go and you want those ones because they're heavy as hell but with the surfers they'll be waiting for that chip in wave and when that one comes there's an understanding of like which wave suits which craft you know so that's really cool to hear that it's such a high high profile location with a lot of really experienced people that that's happening like that's cool communication Mm -hmm. yeah that's cool i didn't i didn't know that about cape yeah yeah it's sick does the same happen to pipe tanner no <laughs> no not really um everyone's just really hungry out there i see so many waves where i'm just like oh man if a bodyboard was on that it would have gone sky high like but pff, everyone just is really just scrapping for whatever they can get yeah yeah i've heard it's uh, oh i only surfed it oh i probably surfed it like 10 to 12 times back like a decade ago now over two seasons and i've never had a crowd like that before in my life i don't think i ever will the only other thing that i felt was close to it with aggression and um difficulty in getting a wave was the super bank in australia like the um, the gold coast point but different scenario with a crazy sweep and nowhere near as much on the line you know like you can die out of pipe where it's snappy and not probably going to die unless you're, you're heading a very shallow sandbank you know which obviously can happen but i'm just saying the odds are way more stacked in pipe so yeah, like that. It's 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 something about pipe, and everyone says that. You know, the Vans Pipe Masters. They recently had that competition. They looked at a couple of the um, promo vids. Every athlete said the crowd out there is fucked up. There's something about that crowd. You know, like you can't. You, you sometimes you can't navigate your way around it. Like you watch Mike out there. How does he just navigate his way around a lineup like that? Well, Mike. He's Mike. He. That's his spot. Like, no one's really gonna. If he wants a wave out there, I, I think that he could go. And if he like hoots someone off, they have to pull off. You know, no one's gonna burn him and not get in trouble for it. Yeah, definitely. He has his spot. When it's big, he goes and sits out the back and he waits for his wave. And being someone who probably could catch a lot more waves out there, he does pace himself pretty well. Like. I would have a hard time not just getting greedy and going on whatever wave I want, like some yeah. people. Yeah, definitely. I would be doing the same. It happened a lot at the island back in the day. I won't name names, but local fellas out there definitely um, got more than their fair share. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Mm. No. Well, you, you, see, you see that everywhere, but it's sometimes very um, apparent at pipe. But, yeah. you know, those guys, like, they, they've done their time and, I mean... You gotta gotta respect it. Yeah, and that's another unspoken rule in the surfing and bodyboarding culture: eh? the the time in the water and, and spending time over there. And I know recently, you guys um had a pretty epic time in late 2022 over in the Grand Canaria, and I believe it was your first time there, Craig. And yeah. obviously, Tony, you've been there a couple of times now, and it would have been pretty cool, um, Craig, being over there and watching Tony going for the world title and um the crazy race that it came down to on like you know, the last event and, and the hype up and really being at like the, you know, I said it before, but it was like the pinnacle for the sport because it was at one of the heaviest waves. It had all the infrastructure, all the resources put towards it. You had a fairy tale ending. You know, what was the experience in, like, what was the first experience like over there, Craig? Like what, what, what did you take away from Grand Canaria? It's, it's a mental place. Like that fronton is something I've never really, I don't know if I'll experience anything quite crazier than that. Just that, like the whole, like the big day we surfed was just quite, just special. Really, it was pretty solid, and like every everyone on tour out, just like everyone going mad, really. And it was just like pretty cool. And the other waves around are really fun, and just like a really good time. It, it was just, yeah, I would have loved to go back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a hit list for everyone. Eh? It's a, it's the um, it's the way those reefs were formed. It just looks like rocky outcrop after rocky outcrop. What was it like watching Tanner over there with those nail biting heats leading up to the to the to the decision? Well, I I didn't get there until I think it was like a day or two before that decision day, but like still watching it on the computer is not the same as it is there. But like. I don't know. It it was just crazy to watch from the beginning of my time I was there to the end of the comp, no matter who won, no matter who did what, like 
every there's so many nail biter heats and like it's to see it there that like gladiator arena that everyone claims it to be is just like that i don't know if there's anything much better than that nah there really isn't and it is a gladiator arena man like look at old mate um don't mean to say old mate in a rude way but his name escapes me the gentleman that uh was severely injured at front on the other day was how's he going i haven't i haven't heard an update him have you guys heard anything about his um condition the um not the one who passed away did he pass away i think someone recently passed away at fronton yeah oh my goodness i was i've misunderstood i thought that was just a serious head injury and that's why more had placed the placed the helmet on well that just puts more emphasis to your point craig that it is a gladiator arena and it's a gnarly piece of rock that isn't to be messed with that's yeah that's wild. no that was that was pretty pretty heavy news to hear um but yeah, I mean that that place is real. It's it's serious. Like so real. As hor yeah. like as awful as it is, I can't believe that people don't get more injured out there. Like because those guys are going so hard and like doing the craziest. It's shit. so <laughs> like that wave is so gnarly. It's so good. It's so sick. But it's like it's there's some serious consequence for sure. For sure, it seems like you you know watch all you guys over there nailing the time and understanding the lines you need to take to get to those lifts but it seems like every now and again there's a wave that you even can't navigate at the best of your ability even if it does look at the time that you could have a 50 50 chance it just seems that that wave has so much water behind it and the power especially on the left like it, 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 we, we say this at home too with certain slabs and stuff that you know you always think more people should be injured but when it actually happens and you see the severity of it you understand that like you know you know, the air versus that Utana were doing in those competitions and the backflips are like, there's some serious consequences behind those moves. And people look at moves these days and they're almost desensitized to it because Instagram and social media and TikTok show you all these amazing things. And, you know, if you were to see those things in videos 10, 15 years ago, your jaw would be hitting the ground and you would be salivating knowing that it's unbelievable bodyboarding. But now because we just see it all the time, it's like, takes away from that oomph factor, you know, and then going back to the injury, it's like, well, it takes back from the seriousness of what could happen after that injury because you just see it over and over again. So, you know, it's um, unfortunate you've got to have such wake-up calls, but it just shows again how fucking hectic bodyboarding is and it's not a sport that's for the piss week. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well put, well said. Um, it is... <laughs> It is fucking gnarly. That's a good way to put it, especially when you're doing it at, you know, the level that some of these guys are in such waves of consequence, like hitting big sections at front on, even just like, like you said, that, that left when it gets big, it's hard to like get through that. Like, it's, yeah. it's insane. It's perfect, but it's like, there's so much going on that it like, you can only do so much to get out of it. So cool, so cool. And that's um, been featured in your recent movie that's coming out, Breaking Even. How was the Prem, gentlemen? How was the time on the coast? That was sick. That was like, I don't know. I, we, I hadn't really been to a premiere like in probably 10 or 12 years. I think the last, or maybe the only one I went to with it was the Hubboards one. Uh, and yeah, that, that was cool. But then we put on our own and like, I think everyone really felt how cool it was. And like it didn't really hit until like moments after we did it, but we kind of all realized that that was like a pretty big moment in history for California and just the sport over here. Yeah, and for bodyboarding, man, like it wouldn't just be for you guys; it's for everyone. Like it made news back over here, and Riptide was so behind it. Like I know both the Elliots were absolutely frothing to see what you guys had done, and um, again, it just leads back into that good uprising and revival of the sport and you don't want to harp on about it so much but it's just sick that these things are happening and what you just said craig the grassroots vibes of like you know the community coming together and you feel it's a big occasion like it is because everyone's coming together that that say you had over say you had like 100 guests there or 110 or 20 with um you know uh uh event venue limits you know what i mean like that obviously it's so hard these days with all the laws to get past that but you know a hundred people there it just spread the words massively influence a hundred people about the cool things that come with bougain and um yeah it's just like when you, you you go to any prem i remember going back to those zion premieres back in the day and the i'm none ones and 
you know, some of the drag ones and, and they're, they're incredible. Going to Benny Player's Far North one, you know, going to um, Adrian Edmonton's um, recent movie with Mitch Blewett, The Chase, you know, like all that kind of stuff. They're always good nights. You always come home feeling epic, you know, and, and it's a big party. It's a great party. Sorry, man. I said proud to be a bodyboarder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good to throw the fins in the air and don't have them slapped down by a five, six shortboard. <laughs> Jeez. That's for sure. Yeah, it was a it was a cool night. It was good to feel like that kind of, you know, support from the community here. Like people showed up and it was, you know, cool cool to see some like old friends that we hadn't seen in a while. And then also like it was cool to see, you know, like some Groms that I didn't recognize, which is cool to know that there are new Groms coming up and stuff like that out there. So that yeah. was like a cool thing that I saw that I kind of took a mental note of. Yeah, 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 definitely. And it's not like the people who's in the lineup, it's the people that are now like watching this, you know, either in the Riptide Cinema or online on YouTube in, the, in like the coming weeks going, you know, that's Boogan. That's what I want to be doing when I get older. I want to have time at the beach. I want to learn lessons in the ocean. You know, I want to get humbled. The ocean humbles you every day. So that's the best thing. Like even if you're surfing a one to two foot shorey to a 10 to 12 foot Mac and Pit, like, there's humility in, in every day in the ocean. So I think it's very healthy as, 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 as human beings, man. Um, gents, so for the, for the, um, for the remainder, like of the, of the project over the last like six months, like leading up to not the remainder, sorry, the last six months for the project, what were some of the, uh, the, the hiccups and challenges that you guys ran into with, you know, SAC chat, um, SAC chat productions and, and, how you guys were getting the project together with the venue and, and costing and, and all the resourcing. Like, was there any major hill you really had to climb to get the, the movie out there? Well, it took us a long time to figure out a name for it. <laughs> <laughs> that can be a hard one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, well, what do you think? I don't... Uh, we didn't really know what we had until like, I don't know, four months ago, five months ago. Like I came to these guys with like things I've thrown together and like we really kind of saw like what we could do and what the potential and and it wasn't really like tough getting the content because I feel like we had so much stacked up that we didn't really like we forgot about and we kind of like hinted on doing something like that and then once I started putting it together I was like we freaking got something here like we can we can really like work on this some more and like so yeah that was like that wasn't too hard but getting the venue wasn't that hard really either like we just uh, had to we just had to keep telling them we had more people coming yeah that was the only issue really that, that was like kind of worrisome which was you know it was a good issue to have kept having to add more chairs add more people to the total Yo, man, that's the best issue to have yeah for sure ringing them up going can we have another 10 can we have another 10 please well, because yeah. what did we originally say? Like 60 people? Yeah. That was what we originally got yeah. the permit for, and we ended up doubling it and then almost tripling it. Or did we triple yeah, we it? Did. We did. We for sure tripled it. 180 people there. Oh, we had 200. Yeah. 200, maybe wow. maybe a little more than 200. Sick. So the place was brimming full of people just frothing on Bergen. Yeah, we couldn't. We hit capacity pretty much for what we could do, you know, with the state of things. And there were for sure some people that just squeaked on in there that we didn't have a number on so yeah, bum rushed it a little bit. <laughs> but um, yeah sick we were there and we had a sick time and there's a shitload of people there so we're stoked <laughs> for sure that even makes it more exciting you had people actually wanted to kind of sneak in too you know like it was a it was a bit yeah. of um you know it, it was exclusive let's put it that way you only had a cap number of tickets people had to get you know squeezing in the side there were you there that night breaking even premiered on the 17th of december yeah fucking hell yeah i was yeah that was it was a good time yeah the photos definitely reflected that and i no, craig you've done um a fair bit of editing in the past man is this something that you've been leading up towards as a project that you wanted to put together like making a, a full-length boo clip uh yeah i mean as a grom you always you always kind of hope and pray that you'll be able to to do that one day and then to finally have the like capability and content to do so was definitely something that i was really keen on and uh, as it kept building and building and it, the like response we got from the when we started promoting it was insane like everyone was like yeah 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 like this is gonna be freaking crazy 
So like it kind of just helped the passion of wanting to make a full full movie um, grow harder. Yeah, sick. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And is it how you envisioned it would come out when you look at the final product? You too, Tanner, like, you know, when you look at the final thing and, and you see all the surfing put together, is it what you envisioned or is it something completely different and also amazing at the same time? Yeah, I think it was pretty close to what I was imagining and I would definitely love to do another one, so. <laughs> yeah, it was it was right up there with kind of how I envisioned it when we kind of started trying to put the pieces together. So it turned out yeah. kind of how we how I thought at least. Epic. I noticed in the clip too that you guys have got um, a lot of I wouldn't even know how to describe the genre. Um, it's a lot more kind of slower electro rock pop. Would 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 that be closer to the genre? Yeah. Some sections, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I know there was a couple of mix ups too, but I I actually really enjoyed it because I haven't really heard that type of music later, the type of bodyboarding for Probably ever. The only ones that I could really link back to some of the songs being similar to the bit more fast paced were saying the Leroy and Dennis clips back from the Waldron brothers back in the day. But um yeah, it was like really cool. Like the different um just the different beats and not like, you know, the we all love a, a hardcore rock beat to a section, like you can't beat it, but it's been done a million times too, so it's great to see the freshness and variety in the music and um, something that I took note of straight away. It actually felt like I was playing a soundtrack in the background instead of just a, a boot clip. So that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That's that's a cool, very cool compliment. Thank you. He was the he was the soundtrack manager. So you know, <laughs> got to give it to Craig for that work. Yeah. Sick. And are you guys going to put a Spotify out from all the tracks we're breaking even? That's a good idea. That is a good idea. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, you guys should do it, man. Like, I love listening to the Tension one back over and over again. And I often, like, there's this um, surfing movie um, called Psychic Migrations. And obviously surfing, this is a bodyboarding podcast, but referencing the song on it, I went back over their um, their list of music. Oh, my goodness, eh? I was fell in love. And it almost promoted, like, the movie even more to me, you know? So it was kind of like, oh, it's a good way of teeing it in. Just a good soundtrack, you know? It makes things... Because sometimes you you see a section and you the soundtrack was so good that you whenever you hear that song you think of that from that point on, so a good soundtrack is yeah. kind of like a pretty key aspect of it all. For sure, talking about like little songs that are referenced in your head and talking about moments with soundtracks. Can I ask both of you two guys what's the number one section and soundtrack that you would put on repeat? You know, just to go back to an old faithful that you love as a section. I know there's a lot. I know I'm asking a lot here, but is there one you can choose? Oh, I'm gonna need some time to think about this one. Yeah. Um. Jeez. It could even be like maybe top five in the top five. You don't have to give me like the number one because that is a hard one, but maybe in the top five. Uh, one that sticks out to me is, um, I think it's Tom Robb in Killer Days. Tom Robb and Mitch at that, I don't know what that wave's called. The It's like just off, super offshore right-hander. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it might be named after the movie. I'm pretty sure that's Killers in South Oz. Okay. Yeah, that's a big one then. Yeah, that's a sick section. There's actually been a couple of good um, seconds out there too. Jace, who... Um, I know the boys got to say hello to him before the podcast started, but I'm actually right now in Jason's oyster farm shed because I'm holidaying down here in Batemans Bay and um, he was kind enough to lend me some Wi-Fi. But yeah, a couple of Zion flicks, he's had some um, really good sections out there too. And that is a crazy wave, man. Only, not going to disclose to too many too many viewers the exact conditions, but let's put it this way, it needs a massive high tide and it's rare that it does it. So it's, um, yeah, iconic. Yeah, man, that oh, it looks so sick. That's definitely a bucket list way for sure. I'm still trying to scratch my head, try to figure out what what section I'm thinking of. Um, top five? Any top fives? Like, who did you base your style off, Tanner? Like, your style is very, you know, perfect and refined, and and it's individualistic towards yourself. But who did you, when you were growing up, like, look at and be like, man, I want to surf like him. It's funny. I was th I was thinking about because I had a feeling that question would come up. I was thinking about it on the car ride here. Um, when I was a Grom, like first started bodyboarding, uh, definitely Hub, definitely Jeff, 
just because yeah. he, you know, he grew up on Kauai. He's like a hero to the Groms over there. So he was kind of my inspiration for like the aerial surfing. And still going so big, man. Like, don't want to cut you off, but like, can we just reference that for a second, man? He's like going bigger than anyone in the sport right now, and he's almost 50. I know he doesn't like me saying that, but, you know, he's close to 50. No, nah, but, yeah, he's like, he's going as big as anyone. Bigger than anyone still. And, like, honestly, like, he's maybe slowed down a little bit, which is scary to think that that's him slowing down a tad. <laughs> Like, you know, it's, it's gnarly. It's yeah. He's, he's on another level. Um, he definitely was a big inspiration for just kind of like that go big, just kind of hit the big section and send it, go for the sky mentality. And then once I started getting a little bit older, I started, you know, watching a lot of the, a lot of the Aussies, you know, that were dominant in that time. Like obviously Hardy, Ben player, um, Rollins like you know all the key guys Damian King like they were all big influences to that kind of helped shape that aspect of surfing for me and then I got a lot of um inspiration from Pierre as well yeah oh man Pierre everyone could draw inspiration from me what a what a freak yeah but it's it's really changed like as I kind of as my writing kind of grew when I was younger like I really I never had one like all time favorite bodyboarder. I loved everything what they did. I always had like specific like things that riders did that I really enjoyed. And I tried to kind of pick the best from each guy that I liked and yeah. incorporate it into my own. Man, that's a very smart way of bodyboarding. It's probably the best way to refine your technique and it's evident in the way you surf, man. How do you feel like you're surfing now, Tanner? You know, like yeah, you look back on your 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 um your career so far. And you don't want to put, um, you don't want to put, you know, lofty goals and ambitions and cement them into the wall and make sure that you have to tick them off at certain dates and times because we all know time is just the human construct and it doesn't really mean anything. But, you know, how are you feeling at the moment with your body body and where do you want to go with it? I feel like I've got improvements to be made. Every time I surf, I feel something that I wish I maybe did a little more efficiently. I wish I did this a little differently. So, I mean, I still feel like I'm, I've got room to grow, which is kind of comforting in a way that I feel like I can, I still am improving. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, I've, I have, I don't know, maybe I'll know when I get there, what I'm, when I've reached my peak. <laughs> <laughs> when you go Super Saiyan, like 5.0. Yeah. Um, man, what's the one thing that's nagging you at the moment? What's the one thing is like, I want to change that. I need to fix that now. Um, forward spins on rights. <laughs> okay. What, what, what don't you like about them? The, for some reason, the hardest move for me to do in bodyboarding. <laughs> like f my whole life, I've just like struggled so hard to just to do forward spins on rights. That's insane. Well, you know, it does make sense because everyone's probably – I don't know about everyone, but I know me personally, at least, it's a lot easier to do certain things going certain ways. Like if I can forward spin well on rights, I can reverse well on lefts, but I don't reverse as well on rights, but I don't spin as well um, on lefts going forward. Do you know what I mean? Doing forward spins. So you see how it almost like the same body movement just with your hands facing, di um, holding different ways on the board actually is the same and it actually is a, a weakness either side. Do, do you ever feel like part of your body is maybe letting you down there like is one side more efficient than the other um i think it was just the waves i grew up surfing like i grew up like the little grovelly wave i learned how to do most of my moves was like a just a little left reef break so i worked worked my spins out really well on that and then when i started surfing some of the better waves that were right handers and stuff i figured out how to like barrel ride and do airs and stuff like that perfectly fine but i never really like groveled on rights when I was growing up so just that like I don't know that one just forward spin on a on the face just still gets me to this day like I still get a little bit stoked when I 
do one that felt clean. Oh, bro, the listeners home will be so stoked to hear that because they'll be seeing you, you know, and you, you too, Craig, doing massive reverses on the reg up in the air above the lip where they all want to be. But they'll be also getting a lot of um, a lot of stokeness knowing that you're happy with forward spins on rights on the face too, man. Like, yeah, you know, like it's the, a, it's the little things, man. We had a <laughs> session the other a couple of weeks ago when I was like, man, I did so many forward spins on rights, and I could tell you were just like, what the hell are you talking about, man? I was like, no, that was sick. Like, that was so fun. It was the most I've done in my whole life. I can earth, man. And and again, you know, both you guys, both world class bodyboarders, those little things it's showing that um there are improvements, as you said, that can be made and there's always there's always things you can improve and I guess that's the the best thing about about being human. There's um, you know, always striving for perfection, so to speak. I mean, Craig, anything you're really off at the moment with surfing in regards to style or technique you want you, you want to fix? Um I just, I, I don't like going left, as weird as it sounds. I've hated going left my whole life. Really? I, yeah, I don't like going left. So strange to hear coming from someone who surfs the wedge a fair bit. I think I like it a little more now <laughs> because yeah. of because of wedge. But if I could surf a right wedge, a right reef, just rights all the time, I would 100% surf rights. Wow. You grew up in Dana Point, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is like the so land of lefts the whole this whole place is just the land of lefts really yeah wow and so just felt nicer on rights ever since i was a grom like yeah right all the way yeah wow wow any moves at the moment though you're kind of like oh i want to be i want to be um changing this or changing that like anything that you're feeling like double loops you know you tell me gorfs (laughs) um yeah that sounds great you know (laughs) uh no, I, I just I just from not liking going left, I don't do many backflips going left on right or going left. I don't do many backflips. Yeah, okay. I would like to start doing more, but I feel like if you're going to start learning at wedge, it's it's not like the easiest place to learn how to do a backflip. So, it's like It's not. Yeah, and there's not many like super consistently breaking like perfect ways to just learn how to do something here. So that would, that would probably be one, one big important thing to do. <laughs> yeah, flip bowls are hard to come by around here. You can get bank reverse sections and little any bowls all day long, but like a nice little flip bowl is, it's hard to come by. You gotta work hard for them. Yeah, wow. Yeah, okay, sweet. Yeah, I guess you do see a lot of reverses coming out of Cali and the West Coast, like World Eclipse and yeah, man. What about down in um, Mexico when you guys went down filming for Breaking Even? Like, how was the wave quality down there? Was a couple of backy bowls, a couple of rides? Yeah, yeah, that was great. I call, I, we didn't really get the surf that you could tell it because there just wasn't really a, a big enough swell um, yeah. for it to sort of do it. But we had fun days at Colorado. Just about <laughs> every day, we could go down there and and get really fun waves. So that that was nice and. I'd definitely love to go back, just not not during a comp. <laughs> yeah, okay. So there was heaps of people there? Yeah, it was I don't know if you've been there or not, but I haven't, no. That's it's just this little Colorado at least is just a little stretch of beach and there's like sixty guys every morning on it and apparently that's quite rare. Not that's, during a comp. That's that's a lot of people for Colorado. <laughs> so um it was just pretty yeah. hectic. Yeah, it's it's a it's a sick wave, man. Like, I've been I've been a few times. I didn't go this time when they were down there. I was in the Maldives for one of the tour events. But it's Colorado is like so fun. It's like a skate park. Yeah, wow, hectic. And the crowds that come with comps would really put a damper on that. <laughs> okay, and was it there for like a QS comp, or was it there for a World Tour comp? Was it there when they were surfing? Um, what was that point break Bar- 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 de la Cruz? No, it was during, there was a... What, what yeah, was it was like an APB North America organization deal. Um, oh. They, yeah, they had them in California. They had one in Puerto Rico. They had one in Mexico, two in Mexico. And it was just one of those. Oh, so it was all bugs. It was all bugs, yeah. Oh, that would have been so much harder too because we were talking about before about the different waves everyone wants that you're all wanting body, body waves. Heavy. Did you end up going to the comp when you were down there, Craig? Yeah, I did it. I placed fifth, so. Sweet, well that's a good result. Yeah, the waves, it wasn't really Colorado for the comp. 
like the pre the previous days, just all of those wedgy kind of peaks, but the swell changed and it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't the greatest, but it was, yeah, it was still fun. I mean, I hadn't been down there, so it was, it was cool to, you know, be in that different environment and see how it all goes down there. Yeah, man. I'm um, speaking about going to Mexico. Uh, I haven't been. We're supposed to go for our honeymoon, uh, me and my wife, before just before COVID hit, actually in March. So when it really shut down the world. But um, my brother was there a year previous for a year and a half with with his wife, and um, he just said you get into a lifestyle down there of like epic food, cheap drinks, um, and you know just constant waves. You'll time it with the different winds and the swells, like gnome your break in the morning, how it goes throughout the afternoon. And if you're there in a town for long enough, you get to know the locals and understand like, you know, best times to surf, even regardless of like tide and winds, it's more so like with flow of people. He just said the lifestyle is unbelievable. Just said it's like somewhere you would, you could see yourself perching up forever if you had an endless stream of money. Is that what you guys felt? Did you feel like it was a dream location? Tano, if you've been previously a bit Craig, like on, on your last trip? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, I, I loved it there too. It was just, you know, going to somewhere new where you just kind of dream to go of your whole life is always a really, a really fun time and just, just quite heartwarming really. Cause you just see everything that you watched for years and years. So it's, it's just cool. And yeah, it felt pretty dreamy. Sick, sick. That's so cool. It's a big thing going from America down to Mexico. Eh? Like it's almost a, like uh, it's almost like a pilgrimage. Every bodyboarder or surfer worth their salt kind of needs to do. Hey, like it's a it's a it's, it's a cool trip. Well, what's it like crossing the border? Like, do you do you because you fl you fly into Mexico City or do you guys drive down? Uh, when we went, we we flew out of Tijuana, which is oh. like just south of the border, but it doesn't set. It's not really as bad as it sounds. You walk through a tunnel from the United States and you go through the airport and like, then you're just in the airport. You're not really in the city at all. So that was fine. That was the first time I'd done it and I would do it again. It's much cheaper to go out of there. And, and yeah, um, from there we flew to Mexico city and Mexico city to Puerto. And, uh, it was kind of hectic in Mexico city. I hadn't been there without like help before so it was kind of like i was kind of leading the way uh i thought it was hectic but once you get everything finalized and you get on that plane it's all good yeah 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 cool the mexico the mexico trip is kind of like a rite of passage for you know surfers in the united states bodyboarders in the united states um yeah it's a it's a cool place i i grew up going out to mexico a lot um not necessarily for surfing um, just, I have, my dad grew up going down there my grandparents live down there now. So I grew up kind of just spending time in Mexico and, um, been to Puerto a few times, like five or six times now. My dad comes with me and we go and like, just have a good time. It's a cool, it's a, it's a special place. It's a special place for yeah. sure. Where does your, um, where do your grandparents live? They are 45 minutes south of La Paz. So they're in Baja, California, like just inside the peninsula on the Sea of Cortez side. So Sick. no waves, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would live there. <laughs> <laughs> Perch up there for sure. But but good fishing and um, actually good uh, kite surfing in the winter. Oh, yeah, really? Wow. Because yeah. they get heaps of winds coming from the outside of the bay kind of thing. Yeah, it just blows for our, like four months out of the year. Oh, wow. But no waves. That's um, Manny V country, eh? Yeah. Yeah, big Manny V. Do you miss him not commentating on the tour anymore, man? Like, he was a wild cat on the tour, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. Um, yeah, he's definitely a, a big personality. So, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different not having him on on as the commentary yeah. guy. Dude, I used to just wait for the highlights at the end of the day and just know that boom was coming, you know? It was it was sick. It's, yeah, I'd, I'd lose it time and time again. Yeah, he's a, um, he's a good guy and, a, a, you know, loves the sport, so it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever run into him down there? Very rarely. Very rarely we do. He's, where is he, in Oceanside? Yeah, I think San Diego, Oceanside. Yeah, yeah. San Diego. He's like an hour south of here. Yeah, sweet. He does some camps down there too, doesn't he? Boot camps? He does, he does camps down in Cabo, kind of all up and down Baja. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of his, his thing. 
It's cool. And yeah, 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 yeah. I remember him talking about one of his podcasts before. He sounded very passionate. Sounded some pretty sick waves out there. Oh yeah. 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 Hey, fellas, before I let you go and get back on, it's getting pretty late over there in Cali. I was just going to say, um, can you tell us anything about the after party for Breaking Even? How was the vibes after? What did you guys get up to? What was the inside goss? You know, what happened? Oh, we had a we had a good night after. Um, we we kind of rounded up everyone who was of drinking age, and we made our way down to one of the hot spots, and uh, we had a good time. It was actually a Craig plays music there uh, every so, so often. Yeah, sick. You're in a you're in a band, Craig. Uh, I, I'm a DJ, so I I go and spin some knobs and <laughs> turn some tables every every so often at yeah. that place. But yeah, they discs. they were they were stoked to have us there because we brought a bunch of people and we had just 45, 50 drunk yeah. idiot bodyboarders. <laughs> yeah. Just rowdy as having a good time. Yeah, it was, cool. it was, yeah, it was, I mean, you never get to really have those experiences with a, a lot of the people who were there. So it was fun to just kind of like all be together and, and just have a crazy mad time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. The best thing about Burgundy, the spirit of bodyboarding. I know a lot of good nights have been held after premieres up and down the coast of, you know, many <laughs> nations around the world. So sick. Um, fellas, I really wanted to thank you for coming on um, Riptide Body Body Podcast, Luke's Lounge, our first video interview, um, and it's been epic, and it's really cool to do it with both um, the two of you guys, you know, especially after the recent um, releasing of Breaking Even and um, all the cool things you guys are doing in the sport, in the free surfing world, and obviously in the competitive space too. And, um, yeah, just for often and, and want you guys to make another one, and big love from Australia here and Jace Finlay's Oyster Farmer. <laughs> yeah, 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 thanks Same. for having us. Yeah, thank you. It was, we had a good time. No dramas, fellas. No dramas. Keep well and speak soon. <laughs> <laughs>